Anda kembali bersama saya Bayu Sugarda di dalam program Sudut Pandang dan saat ini saya berada di kediaman dari salah satu uh, tokoh uh, partai oposisi di Malaysia yaitu Anwar Ibrahim di kediamannya di kawasan Bukit Segambut Kuala Lumpur dan saya telah ditemani oleh anak dari Anwar Ibrahim Nurul Izah yang baru saja memenangkan salah satu kursi di parlemen di bawah kawasan Lembah Pantai Nurul Izah, thank you for being here Thank you for having me How do you see your nomination and the kind of support, the turn up, and did you even expect that to happen? Um, I would say I am humbled by our victories, all the victories of all the opposition uh, parties. It's been amazing, uh, but I believe in the talks, public rallies that are often um, attended by my father, and of course other leaders you talk about. The AP uh, public rallies and past public rallies, even Kaadilan, Pocahsi Party, you can sense the mood of the electorates of the people. There's a clear impetus for change, clear momentum, demand for change. But of course, the question is, will it be translated into votes? And I believe that question has been answered. I was skeptical due to the irregularities and fraudulent practices during elections in 1999. We faced such a massive uh, show of support, only to lose by a slim majority by m in many, many seats. So I think it has um, made us become more careful on how we assess the situation and more vigilant in observing the election process. So our polling agents and counting agents in every place was, were guarding the ballot boxes with their life because um, you have to make sure everything is, is, is observed and, and done well. Barisan Nasional has been in power for the last 39 years, so they see themselves as the provider of the Malaysian people. So what do you think went wrong with Barisan Nasional in this election? After being so long in power, I think they displayed a high degree of arrogance and a sense of complacency. I think they uh, underestimated the anger um, caused by racial politics that has been again and again emphasized by the component parties within Barisan Nasional and this was their mistake um, and it's also the opposition's gain. Of course uh, we have gained control of five states and we had, have not uh, succeeded in controlling the federal government but I feel there's so much that can be done with new voices in parliament. Uh, and this major shake-up to the ruling coalition. Because at the end of the day, it's not that we want to um, do away with any AMNO uh, politician for the sake. I mean, it's more of giving a strong reminder to work together to when you talk about a democracy, uh, Malaysia, you have to respect the views and, and differences of opinion of other parties. So certainly the civil servants and everything, uh, they day to the administrative work and the good things the Barisan Nasional has done, we will, we will uh, continue to support those aims and the rest, with the weaknesses, we try to improvise on them. So I, I don't see why uh, we're such a disadvantage. This can only be something good for Malaysia. As, as you said, uh, the, the opposition party has won in five states. One of them is Selangor. Yes. As we all know, Selangor is one of the states in Malaysia that has the biggest uh, Indian community. The Indian community in Selangor is one of the biggest in Malaysia, but the Indian Malaysian themselves is, about, is only about 7% of the total population of the country. I mean, if you compare that to the Chinese with 20%, and the Malays about 54%, the Indian community themselves is quite insignificant. So how do you explain the, the kind of support that they have for the opposition party in Selangor? First and foremost, we don't subscribe or practice racial politics. So that's clear. When I talk about empowering the people, when I talk about addressing the needs, uh, there are problems. I talk about Malays, Chinese and Indians. Even I, even though I am a Muslim, I'm a Malay. Of course, you as one of the candidates for Lumba Pantai uh, should translate that into the issues that you have nationally, like the, the ethnic inequalities of the Indian people. 
you have to translate that into what the Lembapante people uh, want in their lives. So how do you do that? In terms of Lembapante specifically, they have a lot of issues. I talk about housing. I take that for example. A lot of them were squatters before and given uh, housing, uh, low cost flats. They are in terrible, terrible conditions. Uh, not well taken care of, even uh, sold at a high price compared to the small size that they got. This is due to corruption, which is a national issue. If you give open tenders for these contractors to actually build proper housing, you will get a better um, building, a better place for these quarters. So they understand that national issues are localised. National issues such as the, the, price, uh, the uh, price hike of petrol and, and goods. These are affecting those who are in the lower income category. And corruption, of course, affects those at the higher income category because they have the ones who have to pay bribes to, to get businesses going. So I feel um, issues that I, I, I address will always be relevant to my electorate because at the end of the day is to ensure that they understand where you're, what you're doing and how you're going to champion their future. We'll continue the discussion later uh, into the next segment. Kami akan kembali dengan uh, perbincangan kami dengan Nurul Iza sesaat lagi. Tetaplah di sudut pandang.